Hi guys, my name is Valerie and I'm a real Prague guide and today we're gonna talk about Prague Visitor Pass. Disclaimer, this video is not endorsed by Prague Visitor Pass or any organization in fact. I might even get in trouble for sharing my honest opinion about it, but I'm used to that. First of all, what's Prague Visitor Pass? Prague Visitor Pass is a physical card or an electronic ticket that provides you the free entrance to 50 plus attractions in Prague as well as unlimited public transport ticket. Sounds pretty straightforward so far. The the real question is if Prague Visitor Pass will help you to save some money and who this pass is really for. Of course, the main selling point of this pass is the amount of attractions that it covers. They list them on their website and actually took my time and counted the prices of all full priced adult entrants to these attractions and it totals up to around 7,000 crowns. Bear in mind that you will not be able to see all of them, even if you buy the pass for the longest time, which is five days. My tour guide educated guess is that you will need at least two weeks to see all of that on the list. Maybe even two and a half. All right, so let's see what do they suggest you should do on their website. It seems to me that the pass that they promote the most is the three-day pass. They say that you will be able to save more money and to see some of the most important Prague sites. And they even have their own itinerary that you can follow if you get the three-day pass. Let's first go through the itinerary and then I will tell you if it's even realistic, if you will be able to see all of that that they claim there. Okay, day one. They suggest you should kick off your Prague visit with a tour of the old town. Makes sense. Uh, the earliest tour from my knowledge runs at 9 a.m. and it lasts around two and a half hours. So by the time you finish, you will be at the Charles Bridge. And then I guess you have to cross Charles Bridge because your next stop is Petrine Hill. It will take you around 30 minutes to get there. And then you can either walk up the hill which takes a while, or use the funicular. For some reason, when they counted the price for the Petrine Tower and the mirror maze up the hill, they state here that it's 400 crowns. I think it's less than that. I think it's cheaper. Maybe it's a mistake. Anyhow, my guess, you will need at least an hour and a half for your whole visit on the Petrine Hill. By this time, it's lunchtime and you should be very hungry. So after you take your lunch break, you have to head out to the Prague Castle because you are going to be visiting the castle interiors. So I already see a little issue with that itinerary for the first day here because normally you need at least three hours to visit the interiors of the Prague Castle. And here you don't have those three hours. You have around two, two and a half because because after the interiors of the Prague Castle, you will be also visiting the Lobkowitz Palace. The palace will close at 6 p.m. and you need at least one hour to spend there. So you have to be there by 5 p.m. Okay, well, pretty tough schedule. Let's go to day two. Your second day starts with a river cruise. From my knowledge, the earliest one runs at 10 a.m. It lasts around one hour. After you finish the river cruise, you have to head out to the Old Town Square because next you are going to be visiting the Old Town Hall and the Astronomical Clock Tower. The ticket there does include the tour, so I think you will again be spending there around two hours. And by the time you finish, it's lunchtime. After your lunch break, you have to head out to the Jewish Museum. Bear in mind, the admission to the Jewish Museum is the most expensive one on the list. So you really have to make sure you will visit all of the attractions there in order for the ticket to pay off. Also bear in mind that the Jewish Museum is always closed on Saturdays. I think that you need at least half a day to visit the Jewish Museum or maybe just three hours to briefly go through all the exhibitions there. But according to that itinerary, you don't have that time mm -mm. because after the Jewish Museum, you still go somewhere else. You will go to the municipal house and and the powder tower. Yeah, you're gonna be climbing another tower, this time with no elevator. It's tough to be you. And there is another problem here because, uh, well, the last tour in the municipal house runs at 4 p.m. and at that time you are still not there. So not sure if you're gonna be able to make it on the second day. I don't think it's humanly possible unless you're in some kind of space training program, then it's a piece of cake. Okay, in the end of the day two, you have very heavy legs and the head the size of the large globe exploding with information, but we're still going strong for day three. On your day three, you are first going to Visegrad. Now, there are a lot of sites that the pass covers in Visegrad, so you will need at least three hours to visit most of them. Plus, it takes some time to get to Visegrad, actually. After Visegrad and your lunch break, you have to head to Prague Zoo. 
this is where things really start looking interesting <laughs> for me because Prague Zoo is huge and you usually need at least one day to visit it. We did it in one of our first videos and we literally spent the whole day there and we haven't seen all of the zoo. But according to this itinerary, you only have around three hours, maybe even two and a half hours because you still need to get there. But this is not over because guess what? After Prague Zoo, you are going somewhere else. You are going to Planetarium. Wow, I would like to meet a person that would be able to do all of that in three days but they might be dead by now because uh, exploring Prague is fun but it's also exhausting. I don't think it's humanly possible to see all of that in three days unless you possess some special abilities that uh, allow you to teleport yourself from one attraction to the other because this itinerary really doesn't take into account the times that you will need to have a break or have some food or get from one attraction to the other. Yes, you do have the public transport ticket included in your pass, but for example, on day two, you are not going to be using it at all because there's no tram that will bring you from the Charles Bridge to the Old Town Square. So yeah, looking at this itinerary is very ironic <laughs> because the same people who probably came up with this itinerary run the tour guiding school. And one of the things on the exam for being a tour guide is to come up with a good itinerary for the tour. If you are not giving your tourists enough of time to have a break or enjoy the attractions, uh, you are losing points. And yeah, well, <laughs> there is no time for anything on this itinerary, really. If you would take this itinerary realistically, I would say that you have to remove one attraction from each day. For example, from the first day, I think I would remove Lutkovitz Palace or Petfin Tower. From the second day, I think you're not going to make it to the Municipal House and Powder Tower. And on the third day, probably not to Planetarium and possibly not even to Visegrad if you want to spend the whole day in the zoo. By the way, the historical tram they included to their itinerary here only works on Saturdays, Sundays and public holidays. It does not work every day. Knowing that, here's how much you will really be saving with Prague Visitor Pass. Still not bad. Ideally, to visit all of these attractions, you will need at least four days, not three days. Now I will briefly go through the two-day pass and five-day pass. The two-day pass costs 1,800 crowns. Minus the ticket for public transport, it will be something like 1,580 crowns. And this is the money that you will be spending on your attractions. So what do you need to see in order for this pass to pay off? Of course, you have to go to the most expensive sites, like the Jewish Museum, Prague Castle, Lubkovitz Palace, maybe even the TV Tower of Prague. And that's maybe on day one. No time for leisurely strolls down the Prague streets. On your second day, you will probably have to also take a tour or take a boat ride, maybe even go to the zoo and uh, if you can visit one of the smaller sites as well. This is of course possible, but it's also kind of insane. Now, the longest period of time that you can buy the pass for is five days. It costs a whooping 3,600 crowns. You might be thinking, now I will have more time to see more attractions. And yes, you will, but you have to see the ones that we've mentioned before in the three-day itinerary, because again, they're the most expensive ones, and you will have two days left to see some of the lesser-known sites. So how many of the lesser-known sites you actually have to see in order for this pass to be worth it? The average price for some of the rest of the attractions on the list is 150 crowns. So you will need to visit at least eight places most likely museums, eight museums in two days. Now, I want you to take a hard look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm able to go to eight museums in two days and make it enjoyable for myself. If you can do that, get that five day ticket, baby. Now we have discussed the Prague Visitor Pass and what it covers. And it really seems to me that in order for the pass to pay off, you have to have a pretty intense schedule. You will be spending most of your time inside of the museums and exhibitions. You won't have much time to just walk around the city, uh, sit in the park, observe life around you. Is it though how most people spend their time when they go to Prague? No. From our experience, an average tourist that visits Prague spends most of their time just walking around, enjoying the atmosphere, and then they go to one of the bigger sites, like Prague Castle or the zoo, and then maybe to one or two more smaller ones. So on the average, they would be spending 30 euros for the, all the entrance tickets, when 
what they suggest for three day pass, it will be 100 euros. So no, Prague visitor pass is not for the average tourist. It's really for the museum fanatic. It's for the person who wants to go bonkers visiting all of the museums in Prague. I could see that this pass might be popular with Czech tourists because Czech tourists already covered the basics in Prague and they want to see some of the lesser known sites. But again, they will probably not pay 2,450 crowns per person for visiting museums. Just too much. I see what they tried to do on their website though with the three day itinerary because they squeezed all of the most famous attractions in three days, but it's quite misleading because I don't think it's realistic to visit all of them. You're still getting a good deal money wise, but only as long as you visit some of these uh, most expensive sites on the list, because as soon as you swap for the lesser known sites, you are not getting a good deal anymore. If you want to get Prague Visitor Pass, we suggest you visit the most expensive sites, which are Railway Kingdom, Lobkowitz Palace, Karol Zeman Museum, Prague Venice Boat Ride, Municipal House, The Walking Tour, Jewish Museum, Prague Castle, TV Tower, Tourist Tram, Museum of Decorative Arts, and the zoo. Other attractions on the list are less expensive and you can throw them in between these pricey ones on your itinerary, but don't focus on going just there because the pass will not pay off this way. This reminded me of the pop crawl principle. You pay for unlimited drinks, but you do have limits yourself, which ultimately works in the pop crawl's favor. If Prague visitor pass is too expensive for your budget, here are some tips for you to save money on the attractions here. If you do splurge and get a ticket to the Prague Castle interiors, the Museum of Charles Bridge is going to be for free. Plus, you will get a discount for the boat ride. The admission to the astronomical clock tower and the old town hall, as well as other lookout towers in Prague, is 50% off if you go there during their first opening hour. You can also get 50 crowns off the price of the historical tram ticket if you show them the tickets for the astronomical clock tower or other towers that we've mentioned. Conclusion. Prague Visitor Pass is really meant for people who are obsessed with museums or for people who are just uh, want to be lazy. They don't want to spend the time standing in the line to get some entrance tickets anywhere. And they don't want to figure out the public transport system. They want to have it all on one card. By the way, if you do want to bother and figure out the public transport system, check out this video on how to use Prague public transport. And then finally, who is this pass not for? Prague Visitor Pass is not for the regular visitor of Prague. It's uh, not for the person who just wants to uh, enjoy the relaxing atmosphere of the city, really take their time walking around, looking at everything, because they will not have that time. Okay, guys, well, the weather is beautiful now. We better go and enjoy that. And we'll see you in our next video. Bye.